this is what my old site looks like and this is what my new site looks like. I saw this tweet the other day that said, good design is 90% taste, not skill, not tools or best practices. While he may define good design as the birth of Venus of landing pages, for me, Good design is just whatever makes internet money. And the first way that design is a skill is because you can just steal. More specifically, steal from publicly available companies that are making a lot of money already. For example, you might be wondering how I came up with this sweet text border on my hero page. I stole it from cal.com. The skill involved here is right clicking and then inspecting elements and seeing how they use their CSS to apply it. Copy pasting the CSS, realizing it doesn't work, and then asking for an AI for help. The second reason why design's pure skill is a lot of it is just based on experience. See this chart here? Instead of asking AI to code it up, which is prone to errors and compatibility as it has a tendency to animate things with CSS and oddly sized SVGs, I already know about a library called Chart.js. So I asked AI to code it up with Chart.js and it got it in around 3-5 to five tries. The third skill I needed to improve my landing page is googling stuff. Browser Bear has a pretty nice landing page and the owner's bootstrap 254k MRR. His animations are pretty cool and if animations are worth a thousand words, then I can make it easier on prospects by replacing walls of texts with pictures and animations. So I right clicked and investigated. I saw this Lottie player tag, which I have no idea what it is, so I investigated further by googling it. Turns out, Lottie is a platform that lets you animate SVGs with keyframes, much like any video editing product. Keyframes are just start and end frames you set in your video so that video editing software can interpolate the animation in between the keyframes. Anyway, I built out various SVGs and created an animation Lottie, which is how I got this cool conveyor belt animation to show you that you can publish hundreds of articles in a few clicks with RateScribe. The fourth thing I did was make my page easier to read. I saw another tweet that says one page websites are goaded. He's definitely right that it's easier for you to build, but conversion is niche dependent. One pagers work best if you're selling an MVP, an e-commerce product, or a scam product with click funnels and cramming tons of direct response copy in it. In this chart I stole from Adventure's Udemy course, we see that as perceived value goes up, it's easier to convert. But as difficulty to read the page goes up, it's harder to convert. We want to make the site as easy to use as possible while maximizing perceived value. The fewer the words, the easier it is to read. The more words you have, the more difficult it is to read. But for B2B SaaS, where the text is more dense than emotional direct response copy, using Learn More links to give in-depth details to interested prospects is a better way to go. Also, I did this because Banner Bear's doing this. There's a book called Refactoring UI that I definitely bought and didn't pirate that talks about font colors. That's the fifth thing I did. In my old page, I used black against a light color which can look awkward. The trick to make fonts look more natural is to set the font as a different tone of the background color. Good thing Tailwind makes this design aspect convenient with their class names. The sixth and final thing I did was to steal some more. I got this dense content I want to display in an easy to consume way, so I stole how cal.com did it. They explained something that's more hard to explain using these cards. So in my learn more page, I explained a bunch of features using cards and cartoony images instead of just walls of text. I also stole my pricing table from Paperform, another successful company. Redoing my landing page took me much more time than implementing complex features, and this is ironic because stealing is supposed to be a time hack, but stealing only gave me a framework to work with and small UI details are ultimately subjective. And I had to keep tweaking borders, text colors, spacing until everything looked just right. So maybe instead of 90% taste and 10% skill, it's 80% skill and 20% taste except you spend 80% of your time tasting and only 20% on skilling. So the answer is actually just to use a boilerplate next time.